Have you ever watched a movie that left you with a mix of emotions from laughter to shock to sadness? If not, you might want to check out the 1975 film Mandingo. This movie dives into the complexities of relationships, power dynamics, and the brutal realities of slavery in the American South. It's not your typical Hollywood flick. It's gritty, raw, and at times uncomfortable to watch. But therein lies its power. Set in the antebellum South, Mandingo follows the story of a young plantation owner and his relationships with those around him, including his wife, his mistress, and the slaves he owns. The film doesn't shy away from depicting the horrors of slavery, showcasing the brutality and dehumanization faced by those enslaved. Yet, amidst the darkness, there are moments of levity and even tenderness, highlighting the complexities of human nature. As you watch, you'll find yourself drawn into a world that's both familiar and foreign, where the lines between right and wrong blur, and where characters grapple with their own desires and moral compasses. It's a film that's sure to leave a lasting impact, whether through its powerful performances, its thought-provoking themes, or its unflinching portrayal of history. Now, as you continue watching, keep an eye out for the many funny, shocking, and sad moments that lie ahead. You might just find yourself pondering the film's themes long after the credits roll. Have you ever experienced a moment from Mandingo that stuck with you? Share your cherished memories or lasting impressions in the comments below. We'd love to hear your stories and reflections. Keep watching and let the journey unfold. The movie Mandingo is famous for being bold and controversial. It's like showgirls in its daring approach. It's set in the Old South and has intense scenes of sex and violence. The way it's made makes you think about where it came from and the unusual choices in making it. The actors in the movie bring a lot to the story. Jai Tu Kambiga's portrayal of a slave with a Brooklyn accent adds depth to the character. He makes you feel for him in a way you might not expect. James Mason and Perry King are great as the plantation owners. They show the harshness and complexity of their characters well. Perry's character gets darker as the story goes on, especially in how he treats his wife and the slaves he buys. The movie doesn't shy away from showing the tough parts of that time. There are scenes of rape, violence, and emotional abuse that really make you think. Susan George's character isn't just a victim. She's involved in the bad stuff too, which makes things more complicated. Even though Mandingo tackles tough subjects, it's worth watching because it makes you think about human nature and society. It's a movie that sticks with you and makes you want to talk about it afterward. Just a heads up though, it's pretty graphic and heavy. In the film, based on Kyle Onstott's novel, the story takes place on an Alabama plantation estate called Falconhurst. The character Hammond Maxwell is played by Warren Oates in the sequel to Mandingo called Drum, while Perry King takes on the role in another film. Director Quentin Tarantino highlighted two major studio productions, one being the film based on the novel and the other being Showgirls as examples of the exploitation genre. In his own film, Django Unchained, Tarantino references the concept of Mandingo fighting and the idea of a Mandingo as a prized breeding slave. The information was, Paul Benedict, known for his role as Harry Bentley in The Jeffersons, took on the role of Trader Brownlee in the film. Benedict's first line in the movie is him inquiring about the price of a female slave and her infant. In the sequel, Drum, Ken Norton portrays a different character named Drum, distinct from his role as Mead in Mandingo. Similarly, Brenda Sykes plays Ellen in the first film and Kalinda in the second. However, Lillian Heyman plays the same character, Lucrecia Borgia, in both films. Charlton Heston declined the role of Warren Maxwell. In the film, notable actress Susan George portrayed characters involved in controversial depictions of sexual assault. One such instance occurred in the 1971 film Straw Dogs, where her character Amy faced a contentious double rape scene. First, she was molested by a former lover and subsequently by one of his co-workers. Another controversial portrayal unfolded in the 1975 movie, with George's character committing a disturbing act by raping a black slave. Additionally, in the 1982 film The House Where Evil Dwells, her character engaged in an adulterous affair while possessed by a ghost. Boxer Ken Norton made a significant decision for the movie Mandingo. Despite turning down a $250,000 gate to fight Jerry Quarry, Norton chose to be part of the film, redirecting his career trajectory. Author James Walcott revealed that Jim Brown declined a lead role in Mandingo, avoiding what he considered personal indignity and the challenge of dealing with James Mason's questionable Southern accent. 
The film's production and casting decisions shed light on the challenges and choices faced by individuals involved in bringing Mandingo to the screen. The controversial themes and casting choices, including Susan George's impactful roles, contribute to the film's place in cinematic history. Mandingo arrived in theaters shortly after the blockbuster hit Jaws in 1975. Despite the tough competition, it surprised everyone with its success at the box office. The movie is based on the Falconhurst series of novels, with the first book, also titled Mandingo, published in 1957. The series continued with several more titles over the years. The film received its first DVD release in 2008. Directed by Richard Flesher, it delves into the controversial themes of race, slavery, and the South during the pre-Civil War era. The story follows a young plantation owner and his relationships with his slaves, particularly one named Ellen and her son, whom he fathers. It explores the complexities of power dynamics and the harsh realities of life in the antebellum South. Mandingo remains a significant piece of cinema history, offering a raw and unflinching portrayal of a dark period in American history. The movie Mandingo, released in 1975, had a promotional poster inspired by the famous poster of Gone with the Wind from 1939. This poster showed a man and woman in a romantic pose against an orange and yellow background similar to the classic film starring Clark Gable and Vivian Lee. Before its adaptation into film, Mandingo started as a play written by Jack Kirkland in 1961, based on Kyle Onstott's novel. Despite premiering on Broadway at the Lyceum Theater, the play closed after just eight performances. James Mason, one of the actors in the movie, admitted in interviews that he took on the role solely to meet his alimony obligations. In summary, the film Mandingo, adapted from a play and novel, featured a promotional poster reminiscent of Gone with the Wind and involved James Mason's unique motivation for participating. Mandingo, released in 1975, involved a significant overlap of personnel with drum, including actor Ken Norton, screenwriter Norman Wexler, actresses Brenda Sykes, and Lillian Heyman, costume designer Anne Roth, and producer Dino De Laurentiis. Laura Mish Owens, the Playboy Playmate of the Month in February 1975, had her first nude scene in the film at the age of 24. Despite her nerves, she found the filming experience respectful. The sequel, Drum, occurs about 15 years after the events of the initial movie. Mandingo, released in 1975, marked the final collaboration between director Richard Flesher and cinematographer Richard H. Klein. Despite offers, Cynthia Davis did not take a role. Flesher initially declined Dino De Laurentiis' request to direct, but later agreed, aiming for a truthful portrayal. Flesher realized the importance of straightforward storytelling. In 1975, the movie Mandingo had trouble finding actors for the main role, with Timothy Bottoms, Bo Bridges, Jeff Bridges, and Jan Michael Vincent all saying no. They wanted someone else to play Hammond Maxwell. Surprisingly, Louisiana's governor, Edwin Edwards, was supposed to be in the movie as a gambler, but his scenes got cut because people were worried it might make him look bad. Even with these problems, the movie included a scene where someone is naked from the front. Because of this scene, it got a two-star rating from the Bear Facts. The movie's controversial content and cast choices make it stand out in the world of movies.